Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user RedAlerts. I, 20 female, think my classmate, 19 female, is threatening me, but I can't prove it and I'm not exactly sure. Please be gentle, I've never really had to deal with anything like this or had any kind of drama in my life, so I feel incredibly clueless. I also did not grow up in the US, so I may be wildly misinterpreting things. I started summer school a few weeks ago because I would like to graduate a semester early. On my first day of class, I sat next to a boy, Kyle 20 male, who I had to be partner with for our class's icebreaker and a subsequent project and presentation for the first few weeks of class. Kyle was very funny and friendly and we opened up to each other immediately. I'm not going to lie, I find him pretty attractive and although we are currently just friends, I sometimes sense an interested and flirty vibe from him. We get along very well and are quickly becoming good friends as well as classmates. Veronica was not present for the first week of class and only showed up late in the second week. At that point, Kyle and I had been accustomed to sitting next to each other. The day that Veronica arrived, she was in my seat. I didn't say anything because obviously she didn't know, but Kyle told her that it was my seat. She just stared at me and said, oh, without any expression. She didn't move. So I just sat behind Kyle because it wasn't a big deal to me, though I thought it was kind of rude for her to not really acknowledge what he'd said. It turns out that Veronica and Kyle were already friends. She lives next door to him in the dorms and I believe she also went to his high school. Though according to Kyle, they didn't talk much at the time because she was in a grade below him. Anyway, it was clear to me immediately that Veronica had a huge crush on Kyle. I don't think he knows or if he does, he's very good at hiding it and doesn't really flirt with her or reciprocate her attention. I think he sees her as a little sister type figure, though of course I could be wrong, I don't know him that well. He has complained to me in private that Veronica is very clingy and has depended on him for all of college so far, always making him introduce her to his friends, not really making friends of her own, demanding that he invite her to parties he was invited to. He says that every time she hears him open the door to his dorm, she pokes her head out and asks where he's going. Again, this is just his side of things. Veronica is obviously head over heels for him. She talks in a baby voice only to him and is always trying to dote on him like bringing him homemade cookies to class and saying specifically she made them for him. A few times we have made plans to get lunch together after class and she always wants to come along and we don't really have an excuse to say no. She is always gushing about how great he is either to people in our class while he is right there, how hot he looks, etc. Kyle seems embarrassed by all this but doesn't say anything, just kind of stares at his phone and doesn't speak. I'd also like to note our class is major specific. Veronica is not in our major but took it just because Kyle was taking it. She admitted this when he asked her why she was in this class. While nothing has happened between me and Kyle romantically, Veronica has noticed that we've been hanging out together outside of class and is getting more and more jealous, in my opinion. One time we decided to catch dinner and he was showing me something funny a buddy had texted him on his phone. I noticed his inbox had 24 unanswered and unread texts from Veronica. I asked him about it and he rolled his eyes and said she'd been texting him all day while he was with me and he'd been ignoring it. Okay. Then his phone buzzed. She was calling him and he put his phone on silent and apologized to me. She called him 16 times until I told him he should pick up because I thought it might be an emergency. He did and I could hear her voice over the phone quite clearly. Where are you? I'm out. What's up? You're not with Danny. No. Are you like on a date or something? He looked at me and kind of awkwardly went, uh, in a cute embarrassed way. It wasn't really a date, but it also felt like it kind of was. He jokingly put his arm around me once. Then he said, yeah, kind of. Do you need something? And she said, who is she? He said, okay, if you don't need something, I'm going to turn my phone off. And she said, no, wait, I have a spider in my dorm. You need to come to kill it for me. I'm freaking out. He said, ask Danny. She said, no, it has to be you. I think that's weird. Eventually, he got her off the phone and apologized to me and said that Veronica is kind of spoiled and used to everyone doing everything for her. 
I told him honestly, I think she likes you. And he said, she definitely doesn't. She already slept with two of my roommates, actually. I said, maybe she wanted to make you jealous. And he said, that would be crazy. It definitely didn't work. We talked a little more about it and he said he felt bad for her freshman year because all of her high school friends had ditched her and she was making no friends in college initially. I guess she came off as snobby and high maintenance. He'd found her crying by herself in the laundry room once and felt bad for her and extended an invitation to hang out with his roommates sometime. Ever since she'd become completely dependent on him and very possessive of his time, but he didn't know how to tell her to back off because they lived right next door to each other and it would be really awkward. I also sense he was afraid of the backlash and dramatic reaction that might ensue. Anyway, that's mostly the backstory. Ever since that night, we have slowly been hanging out more and more. Sometimes after class, we will spend the whole day together or text all the time. And Veronica has been weirder and weirder. One day, she friended me on Facebook. After maybe an hour of accepting her Facebook request, she sent me this message. I want to effing kill you, you floozy. I didn't respond because I was very freaked out for a few minutes. And then she said, Crap, sorry, lol. That was my crazy sister. She's messaging everybody crazy stuff, lol. Um, okay. Then, in class, there have been times when walking past my desk, her hip has accidentally knocked my book or coffee to the ground. This has happened three times now. She makes these snippy comments like how my dress has cleavage today and so I must have worn it to get Kyle's attention or my hair looks greasy and so I just need to shower more than once a day. I've called her out on it and said that's a weird thing to say and she said sorry not sorry I'm just an honest gal. One day we were all hanging out with a group of other classmates and we were playing a type of game like would you rather or what would you bring to an island type of stuff. Someone asked Veronica, would you rather kill bad person A or bad person B? Veronica looked at me dead in the eyes and said, I would rather kill OP. Some people laughed uneasily, like it was a joke, but Kyle immediately said, whoa, that's a really effed up thing to say and got a little upset. I didn't say anything because I was like, huh? She immediately said, I was just joking, sorry, I'm awkward, love you girl. But it felt like she only said that because Kyle was upset. Finally, Kyle and I played some video games after class today and he accidentally left his controller in my room. I brought it to his door and was about to knock, but before I even could, the next door, Veronica's, opened and she looked out. She stared at me and said, what the F are you doing here? Taking it back, I said, I'm just returning Kyle's controller. And she said in a mocking baby voice, Oh, of course, you playing games. You're just the perfect girl, aren't you? I didn't respond and just knocked on Kyle's door. Veronica stepped closer and I actually reached into my purse for my pepper spray because she had a crazy look on her face. She said, Other girls have tried to steal him from me, but it hasn't worked. It's not going to work for you. You're not even pretty. Then Kyle's roommate, Danny, opened the door and I kind of rushed inside. Veronica said after me, He's gay anyway. Danny said, What? And she ignored him and went back to her room. He shut the door and I told him what had just happened and he said that he heard her say, You're not even pretty and the gay thing. I told him what she'd said and he said, She must have been joking. He didn't seem to get why I was really freaked out. I think he was just thinking, Catfight? Kyle wasn't home because he had already left to go visit his brother's house for the long weekend. When I got back to my dorm, I unfriended Veronica and blocked her on Facebook. Should have done it a while ago because she was stalking pictures and activity of me and Kyle. When I went out with my roommate to get a snack, someone had written on our door whiteboard. F you, floozy. I have no way to prove it's Veronica, but I am so freaked out to think that she could have been right outside my door. Especially since I never brought her to my dorm room or told her where I lived. She knows the building, but not the floor or room number. I guess she could have checked every door for name tags, but that's a lot of doors to go through. What should I do about this? I actually think she has an illness. Maybe BPD? I have heard her use language with Kyle like, Don't abandon me, and I would end myself if you did X. Move away, leave the dorms, wasn't around for Y reason, and has occasionally hinted at doing dangerous stuff like walking through downtown late at night drunk if he were to leave a party early, etc. I talked to my RA and he said he would keep an eye out, but I don't think he really believes that she's intimidating me. I don't even really believe me. I don't think this is enough to report her. 
what should I do? Talk to Kyle about it? Just not talk to him anymore? We still have class together and I really like being his friend. I don't want her to ruin this, but we have only known each other for around six weeks and I don't want this to be a persistent behavior. I don't think it's my place to tell him what to do about his friend of two years or choose between the two of us. Sorry if this isn't very coherent, I'm kind of freaked out a bit and I want to know if I'm overreacting. Please be kind but tell me if this isn't a big deal or if I'm imagining this, that would be okay. Well OP, there's definitely something you're not imagining and that's her weird behavior towards you. So there's two things I would do. First thing is I would start getting some evidence in case you do want to report her like that weird Facebook message she sent you and I don't know any witnesses to when she said that she wanted to end your life because that was weird. Once you've got enough proof that she is actually harassing you then you just report her to whoever needs to take this case. I've no idea what system your university has but I'm sure it has one. And regarding Kyle just show him the same texts and tell him what's going on. And by telling him all of this, you are not putting him in a position where he has to choose between her and you. That would be his decision to make if he wants to make it. And in the meantime, don't let her chase you away. If you like this Kyle guy, well then go for it. And what do you guys think Opie should do in this situation? Let me know in the comments section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. ZZ Hunk says, You have the Facebook message. Bring this to the attention of school administrators. Don't go through your array. Talk to campus security. Talk to your counselor. Talk to your dean. And go to the police if you have to until you find someone who can help you. Also, keep a notebook. Write down all the things you've written here, dates and times, especially that time she said she wanted to kill you. You have witnesses for that and use that to document your interactions. Don't take this crap lying down. Do you know why she's doing this? Because she gets to do it with no consequences. Make sure there are consequences for her. In the future, no more interactions with her. Stay away from her as much as you are able. She will hurt you if she thinks she sees an opportunity and can get away with it. And Opie responds, Thank you for the advice. I will speak to security and maybe the dean about my actions. Though right now, it still seems intangible. Smiley face. I think I will talk to my advisor too. My freshman year I mentioned having troubles with my roommate and she immediately pulled strings to get my roommate and I moved into separate rooms. So she really cares. I didn't think of asking her before so this made me think of that. Thank you. I'm never going to be alone with her. In class I'm just going to totally ignore her. You don't think I should tell our professor about it or anything, right? I know professors are usually hands off about things that are not academics. Cat Romance says, I think you need to talk to Kyle about it. If you still have the message, you can at least show him that on top of everything else. I honestly find it really hard to believe that he doesn't know she has feelings for him. She's doing everything but taking off her clothes and having sex with him in the middle of class. He either likes the attention or he's basically dumb. Ozogati says, Whoa, that's really scary. I don't think she will actually hurt you, but she sounds like she's already done drastic things, so I think you should be really careful. If he does like you, you can expect these threats to get worse. Start creating a paper trail, take pictures, write down names of people who witnessed these horrendous behaviors. Talk to Kyle and tell him you feel unsafe and you want him to talk to her. Not comfort you and say he will, but actually do it. Also, if things do escalate, call 911 and show them the evidence you have and ask for a restraining order if you have to. And Opie responds, Thank you for the advice. I really hope it doesn't come to getting a restraining order. That sounds so extreme for a silly crush and a summer school class. Sad face. Not saying it won't be necessary, but I just can't believe someone would take it that far. Alright, well the community definitely gave OP some pretty good steps that she could take right now and if things escalate, what she should do as well. So now let's continue this story with the first of two updates. I waited for Kyle to come home today because he was at his brother's for the long weekend. I guess his roommate told him about what Veronica had said to me and how freaked out I was because Kyle was texting me all weekend pretty worried about how I felt and feeling really bad that he'd gotten me involved in it all. I told him it was okay and not his fault and we'd talk when he got back. But he made the effort to come back to campus this morning rather than later tonight. Smiley face. So we sat down to talk. At first we just made small talk about the weekend but I had to say that I wasn't able to leave my room alone because I was legitimately afraid that Veronica was going to be waiting outside for me, which is true. So he asked what happened and I said, haven't you noticed how she's been acting towards me? 
and gave him a full rundown of every little thing she's said or done to me throughout the few short weeks we've known each other, including what she'd said outside his door about him being gay and me not being pretty and referencing doing this to other girls. Kyle admitted that he'd noticed, and pointed out that he'd call her out on a lot of it when I even hadn't, but he'd thought she'd had a separate individual beef with me and just plain didn't like me rather than it having anything to do with him. Dense. But now, he saw that it was pretty obvious that she liked him and maybe deep down he had always known, but he was afraid to say anything because it was awkward and he's never had to reject a girl before. I think he's one of those people who are very distressed by girls crying. I told him that was all well and good, but that if he truly didn't like Veronica, which he adamantly said he didn't, then he needed to do something about it. Not only because I, his friend, was feeling unsafe and hurt, but also because in the future this was seriously going to hinder his relationships and no woman would want to be with him if he allowed Veronica to hang around and treat them that way. He got very quiet at this. At first he apologized profusely and said he was so sorry to get me mixed up in this, I didn't deserve it, and that I deserved to feel safe and it was BS that she made me feel that way. Then he got very awkward and like didn't want to say what was on his mind. After pressing him, he said, So does that mean this has ruined any possibility of us having a relationship? Because that would suck. And then we admitted that we liked each other a lot. Smiley face. And we made out a little. <laughs> but I told him that while I cared about him and wanted to hang out with him more, this needed to be handled first or it would sort of be hanging over us every time we saw each other. Kyle was in full agreement. He said he was going to talk to Veronica and tell her to leave him the F alone. And I was very worried that doing so would just make her escalate things and try even harder to ruin what we had. So I asked him not to and that just for now, please try to ignore her and not give her any attention at all. But he said that's what he has been doing and she hasn't gotten the hint. Now, after my first post, I already made an appointment to talk to my school advisor, who has helped me handle safety and personal issues before with speed, efficiency, and true compassion. I'm going to tell her about what's going on and ask her what my options are and then go to security and make a file on Veronica. I asked Kyle if he would come with me to see these things and he said yes, so at least I'll have his support. As some of you mentioned in the last post, I went to Facebook to screenshot Veronica's I want to kill you message, but I had to unblock her to get her name and picture to show up. When I did, curiosity got the best of me and I went to quickly check her profile, which is public. Here are some of the statuses from the past two days. I'm just not meant to be in a relationship. No one ever will, nor can handle me. I'm tired of people being effing bitchy skanky floozies. Sick of the drama. I'ma just do me. No one can handle me. I'm one crazy bitch and I've yet to find someone who can prove me wrong. I can't be in a relationship. I'm bipolar as F. They either leave or I get bored. I'm the biggest see you next Tuesday if I don't have certain things. I belong alone. It drives me crazy how much you can do for a person and give and give and give and they'll just toss you aside like day old trash for the first piece of ass that comes along. Ugh. Everyone telling me to calm down, stay the F out of it. Your opinion isn't needed, K. That bitch isn't going to mess with me. She doesn't know how fast I can go from 0 to 90. Caption to a selfie she took. Needless to say, I screenshotted those too. I'm a little alarmed by all of that. More alarmed that Kyle will have to be around her until we can talk to security and my counselor tomorrow. She seems pretty unhinged. Was I right in telling Kyle not to directly state, leave me alone, I'm not interested in you, in the interest of his safety and not causing this to completely blow up? Or would it be better for him to do it and hope she gets the message? Also, if anyone has any insight on those Facebook statuses, that would be great. Because they scare me even more than the other stuff, to be honest. I'm quickly finding out that I'm a scaredy cat. Opie's edit. My roommate just told me that Veronica just posted a selfie of her making out with some random guy and him touching her boob. Huh? Not sure if that means anything. Maybe she's moved on? Well, maybe I'm wrong, but my insight regarding all of those Facebook statuses is that she gives me the nice girl vibe. Also, it really annoys me that some people post those types of things on Facebook and then get mad when other people comment on them. But that's neither here nor there. Now, let's move on to the final update. 
Some may have seen my edit yesterday, but after all of her wild statuses on Facebook, Veronica suddenly posted a very suggestive selfie of her making out with some random guy while his hand was down her shirt. This was followed by something to the tune of spending the night with the greatest guy ever. And then there was some gross back and forth between her and the guy in the comments where he talked about what they did to each other, how sexy she was, etc. I heard this second hand from my roommate though. I had blocked Veronica again by that time. Anyway, I hoped that meant she had moved on and was finding solace in someone else rather than Kyle, but I still planned to meet with my advisor and the campus police after class. However, first I had to actually go to class knowing she would be there. I planned to just completely ignore her and not acknowledge her presence at all. Kyle was on board with this and said she would probably give us the silent treatment because she has done that when she was pissed at him before. On the way to class, he tried holding my hand, which on one hand I was really happy about, but on the other hand I kept looking around, afraid that she would see us. We've decided to keep things on the DL until this whole thing was handled, but I guess he thought it was okay to hold my hand when no one was around, and I felt bad for hesitating. I don't want to fear backlash because it's none of her business and she shouldn't control what we do, but at the same time, she seems so unstable that I'm afraid to take chances. We got to class and sat next to some of our friends in the corner. This felt very high school and petty, but I had to make sure I took a seat that was surrounded by taken seats, so there was nowhere for Veronica to sit with us. This actually made me feel bad because I've never purposefully done something to exclude someone before, but then I kept thinking about what she wrote on Facebook and I felt so scared of her. <laughs> Veronica came in and sat on the other side of the room. Usually, she comes to class very done up, makeup, looking nice, but today she was in her pajamas and looked like she just rolled out of bed. I guess that's my professor's pet peeve. He said that on the syllabus. So he briefly called her out on it, something like, Remember to read your syllabus about respectful behavior in class. Veronica just folded her arms and didn't answer him. All during class she kept glancing over at us, and when it came time to do group work, it looked like she was walking over to join us, but Kyle and I made sure to join a group that only had room for us too. Again, this made me feel really crappy and weird, but I also didn't feel too much sympathy for her. Veronica joined another group and everything seemed fine. Then towards the end of class, Kyle leaned over and whispered to me. He asked if we were supposed to do so-and-so reading for class today and if there'd be a quiz. I guess Veronica saw him whispering to me from across the room and she actually started to cry. Not like outright sobbing, but sniffing very loudly, wiping her eyes, putting her head down on her desk and just obviously crying. The professor ignored her and continued teaching, and eventually she just got up, gathered her stuff silently, and walked out of class. Then, Kyle and I went to talk to my supervisor. She was very concerned and said that she was going to message the head of housing, resident hall director or something, as well as the dean of our college about it. She was very sympathetic and asked if I wanted to see a counselor for my emotional health. I said no and then asked her how to go about contacting security, which she encouraged because I made it clear to her that I didn't feel safe. Kyle was also called in to back me up on what had been going on and he also gave some examples of Veronica's behavior over the years. Apparently, she kicked a random guy in the nuts at a party last year because he told her that her shirt was tucked into her underwear. Stuff like that. My advisor was very concerned and pointed me to the campus police, who turned out to be a subdivision of our actual city police. So they are real police officers. At first, they didn't seem to take me very seriously, but I showed them the screenshot of her thread as well as the picture of the whiteboard message and the screenshots of her statuses for the past few days. Then they were suddenly very interested and started the paperwork for a report. They asked me if I wanted campus security, which is different from campus police, to escort me to class, but I said no because I thought that would draw too much attention. I know it's silly, but I'm a shy person and I didn't think it was necessary at that point. They told me that if Kyle or I wanted to file a restraining order, which I'm not even really sure could work if we have to be in the same class together, then one or both of us would have to tell her in clear and certain terms that we wanted her to leave us alone. They said that there isn't much to press charges right now because a lot of this stuff isn't concrete, but I don't want to press charges anyway. I want her to stop and leave us alone. She doesn't have to have her life ruined. 
When I got back from class, I wanted to relax in my dorm, but I checked and got a message on Facebook from a girl I didn't know. She said she was Veronica's roommate, didn't even know she had a roommate, and she said that Veronica was planning to throw paint on me as a prank. I was suspicious of this random girl just messaging me, but I just checked with Kyle and Veronica does have a roommate. Anyway, now I'm at my best friend's apartment off campus, where she has no way of knowing where I went. My roommate is here too and we're just going to have a girl sleepover tonight. I emailed my advisor and attached the screenshot of the roommate's warning and she emailed me back and said that the dean is going to meet with Veronica this week. She alluded to some other stuff being in Veronica's past and that it was maybe not her first time having to meet with the dean. From the wording of the email, they're taking this very seriously. I have a feeling she may be in serious trouble or even expelled. My advisor also talked to the director of the residence halls and the front desk in my dorm has been instructed not to let her into the building. So that's where I am, Reddit. Thank you so much everybody for all of your concern. I am glad to know that the school is very sympathetic so far and on my side. So is Kyle, my boyfriend. After what the police said, he said he wants to talk to her and tell her to leave him alone and that her behavior is not okay. But it may not be necessary anymore if she's meeting with the dean and possibly getting expelled. In any case, for now, I'm just going to stay at my boyfriend's apartment starting tomorrow. Smiley face. Well, OP, first of all, congratulations to you and Kyle on starting this relationship. It sounds like things are going to work out for the both of you. And hopefully Veronica is no longer of your concern. So just live your life and be happy. Thank you so much for sharing, OP, and all the best in the future. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did, then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you, from our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.